Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm messing around, for lack of a better term, with a photo from Madeira that I took there back in May when we were there on the Luminar Adventure. And in Luminar Neo today, I'm going to show you how I manage colors in a photo. There's five key tips I try to keep in mind at all time. I'm going to show those in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. This is the base photo, which has had nothing due to, uh, done to it. So I'm going to start in Develop Raw. And the first thing is, of course, that you can tell that the highlights are pretty blown out. So highlights down to negative 100, and that looks a lot better already. I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to do about a 30 or so in terms of lifting the shadows. And then I'm going to take some smart contrast and go to 50, let's call it 55. Now that's before and after. Uh, the first tip out of these five tips is uh, you may be tempted if you want to amp up the colors. And, it, and let's be honest, this was a gorgeous sunset. It had some beautiful colors. There's some nice pinks and warm tones, also some nice blues, even some nice greens. It's a beautiful uh, palette, if you will, of color to work with. But I don't start with saturation and vibrance down here. I sometimes will do a little bit of vibrance. I almost never use saturation here. I just recommend not doing it because there's other things you need to do first, I think, to get a better edit. And if you do those after you apply uh, color edits, I think it messes them up. So tip number one is don't use the saturation slider down here to amp up the colors. There's better ways to do it with more control that you can do later. So I'm going to skip that. Now that doesn't mean don't play with temperature or, or tint. I may do that, not in this photo, but I may do that uh, in some sunsets like this where you're trying to amp up uh, the color temperature or the, the tint a little bit and make some adjustments. But I don't like to use the saturation. I just think it can throw off your edit. So that's tip number one before and after. And tip number two is, I think, make sure you get the light right before you go and uh, start adjusting colors. And so what that means to me is get the contrast right because look at the difference already in the colors. And all I've done is just move a couple of sliders here. I adjusted this highlight balance and I'm going to pull that back a little bit, but I adjust the highlight balance and having an impact on highlights and midtones. I'm going to do those next. Um, and shadows contrast it does impact the look of the color. That's another reason why I don't like to use the saturation slider in Develop Raw. I think it gets thrown off when you come back and do things like adjust contrast, which I personally feel is the best second move. Develop Raw is the best first move. Super contrast is the best second move. So before and after the colors look different. And that is because we're adjusting contrast. So some colors are getting a little bit brighter, some are getting a little bit darker, and that color contrast is impacting the look of the color in the photo. So before and after. So that's why getting the contrast right is tip number two. I recommend getting all the light done, develop raw and super contrast before jumping into color edits. Now, speaking of color edits, the color tool is a great tool for applying color, but don't be tempted to jump into saturation and vibrance right here. There's much more control down here in the HSL panel. It's usually collapsed. Just click it to open it. And you have HSL, so hue, saturation, and luminance for each color. Now, I'm not going to play with any hues here, but I am going to play with the saturation. And what this does is gives you the ability to control those individual color channels, which means those individual colors. Uh, and I can adjust them individually without impacting the rest of the image. So I've adjusted the saturation. I've taken the red and orange and increased that, but the blue saturation I reduced. So if you look at the before and the after, a little bit more pop in the warm tones, a little bit less intensity in that blue in the sky. So before and after. And I might give that back a little bit. I love the blue and I love the color contrast, but that blue is pretty intense and it gets even more intense if you edit it very much. I'm going to jump over to luminance. The greens are nice here, but I don't care a whole lot about this foreground. So I want to reduce the luminance of the green. So in other words, I'm making them darker so that they're less of a focal point in the image because the foreground's kind of empty. Well, it is empty. It's not kind of empty. So not really a good foreground element to kind of anchor that uh, composition, but I love the composition of the tree and the sun uh, sunset and all that. Uh, so I'm going to lift the luminance of the blues, make them a little bit lighter. So now if you look at the colors in this image before and after, the most noticeable one, of course, is the green because it got a lot darker before and after, but also the warmer tones got a little bit more intense and the blue got a little bit less saturated. So before and after. So that's why I think using color and specifically the HSL component of that is a huge tip to helping you control colors in your uh, edit. 
Now we're going to move into my favorite color tool, which is Color Harmony. And this is a monster tool. It's fantastic. It's got so much stuff in it. And that's a, a sub tip. And that is um, be careful how many color tools you use simply because if you use a lot of them, that stacks and stacks and stacks more and more color edits on top of one another, and it gets really intense really quickly. So that's kind of, a, I think, a given. I say that in a lot of videos, but just be careful there. Um, and note that there's four different color tools just in Color Harmony. So you don't have to use them all, even though I'm going to use three of them here. Uh, but I want to show you uh, what this tip is really all about, and it's about controlling these, uh, these colors. I'm going to go, I uh, did a little bit of split color warmth only on the warm colors because I already kind of reduced the saturation and brighten the blue. So I don't really want to do anything with these cool colors here, but the warm color I added a little bit too, plus a brilliance and warmth adjustment. So before and after, especially those warm colors before and after getting a little bit more intense, but now we're going to jump into the midtones and I'm going to take uh, this towards the red, only about a five. And then on the highlights, I'm going to do about a 14 over here on the red. So maybe it's something about like that. And the magenta, I'm going to do like a negative seven or eight. And now that's getting fairly intense on the color. I like it. But what this tip is about is really control. So if you look at the before and the after, notice that we're also picking up a lot of color down here in the grass. And I already darkened the grass. Kind of want to make it less of a focal point. So this is what this tip is all about. And that's masking. For me, I really like these colors in the sky. I don't really want them a lot of other places. So luminosity mask is a perfect mask type for controlling color balance, or I should say color harmony overall in this image edit, because what I want to do is get it away from some of those darker parts, right? So just doing that, I've now isolated that to just the sky. And that was super quick, not to mention accurate because it's based on tonal values. Now I can fade this a little bit into that foreground like that. So I pick up a little bit of that there, but I'm not really getting it in the tree because that's darker. And I'm not, this mask does not cover the shadows. It just fades into some of those kind of mid, kind of between the midtones and shadows. So using that luminosity mask gives me massive amounts of control. And now that color edit isn't really going into the grass as much, but it's definitely going into the sky. So before and after. So that's that fourth tip. Use especially luminosity mask, but really any kind of mask to control the color edits that you apply so that they're specific and targeted. And that also keeps you from stacking too many things on top of one another, especially if you apply them globally, because then you end up effectively just losing control. I think that's a the huge tip that makes a huge difference for me and my edits. And tip number five is to use toning for these little uh, extra touches, if you will. I love toning, also known as split toning in other apps. But if you click on highlights and drag this saturation to the right, and I'm going to go like a 15 or 20, and just all I'm doing is taking whatever hue is highlighted here. So it's currently all the way to the left. If you look, that left side is red. So I'm basically adding red at the amount of 25 into the highlights. That's all toning is. Uh, the cool thing is you can also make adjustments to shadows, which I want to do. So I'm going to here, first you have to move the saturation slider to kind of wake this one up. But I'm going to put this at about 230, and that's a, that's a blue. Uh, and then my saturation amount is going to go up to like mid 30, so maybe 35. And that kind of cools off um, some of that foreground, makes it a little bit darker, and I think a little bit richer, but a little cooler. And that plays up that color contrast between kind of the warmth in the sky and then the cooler colors kind of in the foreground and even the color, uh, the cooler colors that are in the sky. So you don't really need to mask toning. You can, but because it's already separated by highlights and shadows, it gives you the ability to split the tone, hence the name split toning, and give a color flavor or a color grade, if you will, to one tonal area, highlights, and then a separate color feel or color look or color grade to the other tonal area, which is shadows. So toning is a great, great tool. I use it a lot. But if you look at the before and the after, the warm tones got a little bit of extra umph, and the uh, the little darker areas, the shadow areas, got a little bit cooler. I think that works together really nicely. So that's five tips, but I got one bonus tip for you, and that is many times at the end of my edit, I will go back to develop and open that up one more time and just play around with the contrast, the highlights and the shadows, and just see what that does to my overall image, because it will also impact the look of the colors. So I may come in and add a little bit more contrast. That's going to create a little bit a greater difference between the bright parts and the dark parts, right? The dark parts is going to be the tree, which is in silhouette and the foreground. The brighter parts, of course, is the sky where all the color is in existence. Um, you can adjust the highlights if you want to, depending on what you want to do, like that blue. 
kind of looks nice when I'm lightening, lightening it like that. And shadows maybe take that down a little bit. So just create a little bit higher contrast image before and after. And maybe put on the highlights a little bit as well. That's also going to impact some of these clouds and not just these areas over here. By the way, there is a spot there. I do see that. I didn't. I didn't take spots out in this video, but you know how to do that. It's one click in Luminar. Uh, the other thing I like to do sometimes as a final touch-up global adjustment, in addition to adjusting the light, is sometimes coming back in plain with temperature. Now, I like the colors. I like the temperature. I like that overall look, but it does depend on the photo. Sometimes I'll come back and experiment, and in this case, uh, I experimented with it going a little bit warmer, so like really minor, like a 2, and a little bit more tense, so like maybe a 7 or 8 or something like that. It's a nice little extra oomph. It does apply to the entire photo because I'm not masking here. But if you look at the before and the after, pretty significant difference overall, even though it's pretty minor moves here with contrast, shadows, and highlights, and the temperature and tint, but makes a big impact. So before and after. So that's like a bonus tip at the end. You don't have to do that, but it's worth experimenting with. But those other five tips will give you great control over color and allow you to walk away with photos that you're really proud of and that you really like in terms of their color palette. So if you look at the before and the after, pretty quick, pretty easy, and we tame the highlights. We brought back beautiful colors that were in the scene, just you know, in this raw file, just had to bring them up. But if you look at the before and after, massive difference. That's how I do it in Luminar Neo. Thanks for watching, friends. I'll be back really soon with another video. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.